You are welcome to today's physics class. And today, I want to take you on conduction of electricity through liquid, which is known as electrolysis. My name is Norudin Busari. Learning objectives. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe electrolysis. You will also be able to state Michael Faraday's law of electrolysis. And you'll be able to state the uses of electrolysis. Introduction. Electrolysis is the process by which electricity is conducted through liquids. And Michael Faraday studied this extensively and laid foundation for the theory of electrolysis. So, he is the father of electrolysis. Liquids, such as solutions of acid, bases and salts are generally good conductors. While liquids such as benzene and paraffin or kerosene are poor conductors. Organic compounds are generally poor conductors. While pure water is also a pure conductor, water containing some dissolved salts conducts moderately. So, with this introduction in place, I've been able to give you examples of conductors and non-conductors. Conductors are also known as electrolytes. Non-conductors can also be referred to as non-electrolytes. Examples of electrolysis. Pure water is a poor electrolyte. Because of that, a few drops of sulfuric acid will help to increase its conductivity by adding more mobile electrons. You don't forget from the introductory, from the introduction, I told you that pure water is a poor conductor and solution of gas, uh, uh, acid, bases and salts are good conductor. So sulfuric acid is a good conductor. When a few drop of sulfuric acid is mixed with pure water that is a pure electrolyte, it's going to increase its conductivity by adding more mobile electrons. As such, the ions present in the electrolyte now are from sulfuric acid, we have hydrogen ion plus SO42 minus or tetrahydrosulfate 6 ion from water, we have two ions as well. We have hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. Inert electrode like carbon or platinum electrode are used so that the acid solution do not corrode the electrode easily. So, in this example, inert electrodes like carbon or platinum electrodes are used so that the acid solutions do not corrode the electrodes easily. And we have been saying ion ion. Ions are charged particles which exist in electrolytes and take part in the electrolysis. Now, in this example, are the cathode. Hydrogen ion migrate to the cathode and accept an electron to become hydrogen atom. After that, the hydrogen atom form a covalent bond with other hydrogen atoms to become hydrogen gas molecules. So, that is two hydrogen ions gain electron to become hydrogen gas. That's the equation. Observation. After this, effervescent of odorless, colorless gas occur at the cathode, and that is the hydrogen gas. And the anode, tetrahydrosulfate 6, and Hydroxyl ion migrate to the anode where hydroxyl ion is preferentially discharged because it is having a lower position in the electrochemical series as compared to tetrahydrosulfate 6. So, for hydroxyl ion, it's going to give us two molecules of water 
more on oxygen gas than electron. Therefore, the overall equation becomes two four molecules of water. We now give us two molecules of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Michael Faraday's first law of electrolysis. It states that the mass M of the substance deposited at the cathode during electrolysis is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity or total charge Q passed by the electrolyte. And this can be expressed mathematically as M equal to ZQ. And Q equal to IT. That gives us ZIT. Z is now equal to from this, making Z the subject of formula, we have Z equal to M over IT. But what is Z? It is constant of proportionality and it is called electrochemical equivalent of the substance. This Z, called electrochemical equivalent, may be defined as the mass of the ion deposited by passing a current of 1 ampere for 1 second. That is by passing coulomb of electricity. The unit of this electrochemical equivalent is gram per coulomb. Michael Faraday's second law of electrolysis. It states that when the same quantity of electricity is passed through different electrolytes, the masses of different ions liberated at the electrodes are directly proportional to their chemical equivalents or equivalent weights. Again, Michael Faraday's second law of electrolysis states that while well, the same quantity of electricity is passed through different electrolytes, the masses of different ions liberated at the electrode are directly proportional to their equ chemical equivalents or equivalent weights. This can be expressed mathematically as M1 divided by M2 is equal to E1 over E2. Or, since M equal to ZIT. Z1IT we now you go to Z2IT. Z1IT divided by Z2IT is now equal to E1 over E2. IT we cancel IT, so we can have Z1 over Z2 is equal to E1 over E2. Therefore, the weight is equal to, equivalent weight is equal to ZIT. Also, one varad day is equivalent to electric electrical charge carried out by one mole of electrons. Uses of electrolysis. Electrolysis is used in the extraction and isolation of metals. It is also used in purification of metals. And is also used in electroplating of summary. From this lesson, we have been able to learn that electrolysis is the process of conducting electricity through liquids. We also learned that Michael Faraday studied and laid foundation on the theory of electrolysis with two laws, and we have been able to state the two laws. Also, we learned that electrolysis is useful in isolation, purification, and electroplating of metals. Ions are dash particles. Which extremely which exist in electrolytes and take part in electrolysis. Option A non charged. Option B charged. Option C neutral. Option D positive. Send your answers and inquiries to Jimmy Smith at edufest.ng. Thank you for